Hey guys, Jonas here. Today we're touching up another photograph and I'm gonna show you some cool tips and tricks on how to work with your photographs. First of all, Rob and I wanna thank you for sending in all of the photographs. It's been really cool going through them. Uh, there's a lot of variety out there. We decided that we wanted to split this up and do it kind of two different ways. So Rob and I don't do the exact same video twice. That would be kind of pointless. So he's gonna take one photograph, which is the night photograph that he's touching up. It's awesome looking. I'm gonna go a different route and I'm actually gonna take a photo that I refer to as an ordinary photograph. I don't mean it's a bad photograph, I just mean that it's one of those photographs that a lot of us can relate to. Uh, one of those photographs that a lot of us probably have in our folders somewhere. Uh, all right, let's dig into it. This is the photo I'm gonna be using and uh, let's get started. But before I start playing around with this image, I want to just briefly touch on why we choose to shoot in RAW as opposed to JPEGs. And to do that, I want to bring up another photo that we received from Levante Coros. Here it is. This is the unprocessed RAW image. When you see it like this, it looks very dark, but I really liked how the train tracks created these cool lines at the bottom. So wait until you can see what I can pull out of this with some very simple adjustments. I'm opening up this one in Adobe Lightroom. If I begin by bumping up the exposure, you can really see how much information is stored in the dark sections. You can almost make it look like it was shot during the day. So with some playing around and highlighting specific areas only and some simple adjustments to the saturation and colors, I can make it look like this. I think this is a sweet capture and I hope this is enough to convince you to shoot in RAW and not in JPEGs. JPEGs are already compressed and don't contain all this information. Now let's get back to our photo from Jesse and I'll take you through some of the steps to make this photo look like this. So what I'm aiming for is making this photo look somewhat natural. I don't want to make it look like it's been processed too much. So I'm going to go for something that you can post on Facebook or something and people will still see it as a photograph and not a piece of art necessarily. Jesse, like I said, is the photographer. He lives in Malaysia. He took this photo near his home, which makes me really jealous. It looks like you have an amazing backyard, Jesse. Now, I normally like to touch up my photos in Adobe Lightroom, but since Rob was doing that in the tutorial last week, I want to show you how you can do pretty much the, the exact same thing in Adobe Photoshop. You might know that when you open a raw image in Photoshop, you will get this screen first. And it might be tempting to just go ahead and hit the open image down here at the bottom, but we're not going to do that just yet. Instead, we're going to do most of our adjustments to the raw image here first. And we're also going to fix a few things that I feel are really distracting me from what I think should be the focus of this picture. The first thing is that Jesse is right in the middle of the shot. In my opinion, this results in too much space behind him that really serves no purpose for the shot. Instead, I feel that we should be focusing on the beautiful forest that he's looking at, kind of like the Lion King standing on the cliff looking out over his forest. So I'm going to change the composition of the image. The other thing that is bugging me is that stick in the ground. It takes away much of that wild feel, I think, so I'm going to remove it. But the first thing I'm going to do is make some basic adjustments to the whole image and brighten up the dark forest and soften the bright sky. By decreasing the highlights, I can make the clouds pop a lot more since most of the highlights in an image like this one is going to be from the sky. And I'm actually going to take the highlights in this one all the way down. See how the clouds kind of turn out a lot better? Then if I increase the shadows, you will see that I can get a whole lot of information back from the dark forest. Just don't overdo this as the rest of the image is also going to be affected at this stage. What I'm aiming for now is making adjustments but trying to make sure that Jesse stays properly exposed. Then in a second, I will start to make more adjustments to specific areas of the image. Before I do more, I'm going to change the composition by cropping the image. If you shoot in RAW and use the maximum resolution that your camera can handle, cropping the image a bit won't matter too much unless you plan to make a really big print out of your final image. I want Jesse a little bit off to the right of the frame looking across at the sun. I'm also going to cut his foot out. Too much ground there, I think. So something like this. I think I will crop it a little bit more later, but for now I think it's good. Just a couple more adjustments to clarity, saturation, and some shadows. Hmm. Okay. I still think the sky is a bit bright and it needs a lot more color, but Jesse is exposed okay. So I'm going to start adjusting specific parts of the image. First with what's called a graduated filter. It's up here. Select that and then you just drag and the presets are not exactly what I want. So I will go ahead and change that. And now all of the changes that I'm doing will only be to the 
the part affected by this graduated filter. I'm decreasing the exposure a little bit. Shadows and saturation definitely up. Maybe a little bit of a tint. All right, just a little bit. Ah, yep, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to use the adjustment brush, and this allows me to make adjustments to an area that I choose. So I kind of paint the area first, and this part that I'm painting is the part that I will then manipulate a little bit. I start with the forest. Let's make it a bit brighter. And I'm going to make a new adjustment brush here to the uh, sand. Just make it a little bit less conspicuous. I'm dropping the saturation a bit. And I'm also going to do this to a few more places, just adding another adjustment brush. I think I'm also going to add another graduated filter here to the bottom to draw some attention away from it, like this. Kind of like a vignette, I guess. Here's another good tool to know, noise reduction. There's always going to be some noise in an image, and if you have cropped it and played with the clarity and sharpness and stuff, there will be a lot more noise. The noise reduction tool is up here under detail. I can't give you an exact number to go for here, but test it out and don't go overboard. If you bring it up too much, it kind of starts to look like a pastel painting, not very natural. Now zoom in on areas like the face to see the difference. It's pretty cool. I'm also going to take a quick look at the forest here. All right. Yeah, that'll do. And now I feel okay with the adjustments I've done to the whole image. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up in Photoshop. I still have a couple of things I want to fix in the program. Let's just make a quick comparison to the original photo. I think it's a pretty big difference. And now I want to try and make that sky pop even more and add actually a lens flare. But first I'm creating another layer. It's going to be completely black and I'm actually going to uncheck it so you can't see it right now. And I'm going to highlight my photo layer again. With the photo layer highlighted, I'm going up to filter, render, and then lens flare. I'm going to adjust it to how I want it for this picture. I'm going to put it up here where the sun is. The problem now when I add this lens flare to the picture is that I can't change it at all after I click OK. And even if I think it's a good spot and all, I really think it is too bright. So here's how I fix that. After I have applied it to my photo layer, I actually undo the action. So I basically just delete what I just did. I now highlight and mark my black layer instead and then go up to filters again and choose the top option, which is going to be my lens flare because that was the last action that I did. So that lens flare is now going to be added to my black layer. I then go to blending modes and choose screen and voila, the lens flare is its own layer and you can drop the opacity or whatever you want to do to it. Sweet, huh? To add some color to the sky to fit the feel of a late afternoon sunlight, I'm adding some pink. So I'm making a new layer again. I'm making that layer completely pink. I'm going to blending modes and uh, clicking multiply this time. And then I'm going to use the gradient tool. A quick key for that is G to fade out the lower part of the layer. So now I have pink only to the sky, but it's obviously too much. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my eraser and I set it to a large and feathered eraser with the opacity and the fill drop to about 50%. And I'm actually going to erase most of this layer. I'm starting with everything that is covering Jesse. And what is left after I'm done here is just a subtle pinkish haze where the sun is and a couple of other parts. Now it's time to remove that stick. And I'm actually going to crop the right side a little bit more to first get rid of that second stick behind him. Like that. Easy. To remove the one right next to Jesse, I'm using the clone stamp tool. Just going to uncheck these two layers above here. That makes it easier to see what I'm doing. I'm changing the size of the brush back and forth quite a bit, depending on how picky I need to be. For example, where the stick meets Jesse's shirt, I'm actually going to use a smaller and more detailed brush. But then up in the sky here, I can use it a little bit bigger. Uh, holding in the Alt key to pick an area that you want to clone, and then you just brush over the stick like this. 
this process takes a little bit of time so i'm speeding up this video so you don't have to watch the whole thing but just as a reminder you hold in the alt key to select an area that you want to clone and then you brush over the area that you want to cover in a couple of places you might see that you get kind of harsh lines between your new cloned area and the background and to cover that up i'm using the healing brush tool the one that looks like a band-aid to smoothen out some harsh lines same thing you just pick an area using the alt key and then you move over the harsh lines and you just do a little quick drag and usually that makes the harsh lines a lot smoother i'm pretty happy with that can't see the stick anymore all right i'm just going to highlight these layers again so you can see them I'm just going to do one last thing, and that is to create somewhat of a custom vignette to the whole image. And this time I'm going to do it by duplicating my photo layer. And I'm going to have the top of the two selected. I'm going to go up and drop the brightness to about negative 100. And then I'm going to choose the eraser again. I'm keeping the opacity and the flow to about 50%. And I'm going to use a large feathered brush to kind of erase everything in the middle of the frame, leaving kind of like this slight darker vignette around the edges. This is kind of a little bit of a trick to draw the attention to the center of the image. And it creates kind of like a fuller three-dimensional feel. Let's take a look at the before and after picture now again when you've seen the process. Jesse, I hope you liked what I did to your photograph here. I'm going to send it back to you and feel free to do whatever you want with it. That was kind of a little bit of a quick fix of this photograph. I hope it gave you some ideas on how you can touch up the photographs really fast before you post them online or, or uh, send them out to your grandmother or whatever. Um, and remember that this is just one way to do this. There's going to be thousands of ways that you can touch up the photograph. Anyway, I hope you liked it and uh, check out the other video that Rob has done on the night photo. It looks awesome if you haven't seen it already. And uh, see you in another video.